The popes also made laws that were backed up by soldiers and courts, special church courts usually, with the power to condemn people to be burned to death. And they, these laws stated that nobody except priests and bishops were allowed to read the Bible, and it was only to be read and spoken in Latin. It didn't make any difference that nobody had spoken Latin for hundreds of years, and that none of the people who heard it read in Latin would understand a single word. Since the Catholic version of the Bible was written in Latin, that was how it was going to be read forever. No individual was allowed to own a Bible. Bibles could only exist in churches. No one except a priest or other church official was allowed to give any interpretation of what any scripture meant or teach from the Bible. Death by burning at the stake was the standard penalty for anyone translating the scriptures from Latin into the language of any country. The same Council of Trent in the middle 1500s, which tried to pretend that only the lowest level of church officials tried to sell the indulgences, hell insurance for money, and the bishops, archbishops, and cardinals, and popes didn't even know anything about it for over 400 years, even though the money from the indulgences was what was used to build St. Peter's in Basilica in Rome, the biggest church uh, Catholics have. That council also tried to outlaw anyone other than the priests from ever reading any scriptures at all. One historian wrote, a severe and intolerable law was enacted with respect to all interpreters and expositors, meaning people who would teach from the scriptures, by which they were forbidden to explain the sense of any of these divine scriptures, divine books, in matters of faith and practice, in such manner as to make them speak a different language from that of the church and the ancient doctors. Now what that meant was, that nobody, you could read the Bible, a priest or a bishop could read the Bible to the people in church in Latin. And if anybody asked what that meant, imagine reading to you in a language that nobody had spoken for a thousand years, and that's supposed to be your guide for how you're supposed to live and how you're supposed to behave. And the person saying, well, what does that mean? And you being only able to explain to him in Latin what it meant, not very brilliant. The same law further declared that the church, Roman Catholic Church alone, meaning the, the Pope, had the right to determine the true meaning and significance of any scripture. Now to add to the measure of these proceedings, the Church of Rome persisted in affirming, though not always with the same plainness of speech. In other words, they would, they would hint at it, they would threaten at it, they would do things that would give people the power and impression that they should not mess around with this. That the Holy Scriptures were not composed for the use of the people, but only for the priests, for the spiritual teachers. And as a consequence of the fact that these Scriptures were not intended to be read or understood by the people at large, the Church ordered that all Bibles, all parts of Bibles, all pages, all bits of scripture were to be taken away from the people everywhere where the church had power to force that to happen. Now, it, does it seem reasonable to you that a church that creates such frauds and teaches with such arrogance and denies people access to the teachings of the Savior could possibly be the church established and approved by Jesus Christ? Do you believe that the Savior would approve of these false doctrines and approve that the popes and bishops and other leaders who were unrepentant murderers and adulterers and thieves, men who refused to allow ordinary people to own or read a copy or any part of the Bible and would condemn people to be burned at the stake if they read the scriptures and told other people what they had read or what they thought the scripture meant or would try to learn any scripture in a language of their own country? Do you believe that these were righteous leaders? The Lord taught, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Surely the church as Christ had organized it, and as was established by the apostles, had been so changed that it no longer existed. The priesthood of God had been replaced by a man-created leadership group that sought worldly and financial power and ruled like dictators and tyrants, who could buy their office, murder anyone who chose, and commit adultery, and felt that they were above all the law and the morality 
that they told other people they had to live by. A man named Draper, who is a well-known historian, wrote, More than a thousand years had elapsed since the birth of our Savior, and such was the condition of Rome. Well may the historian shut the annals of those times in disgust. Well may the heart of the Christian sink within him at such a catalog of hideous crimes. Well may we ask, were these the vice-regents of God upon earth, these who had truly reached the goal beyond which the last effort of human wickedness cannot pass? Not until several centuries after these events did public opinion finally come to the true and philosophical conclusion, the total rejection of the divine claims of the papacy. For a time, the evils were attributed to the manner of the pontifical election as if that could by any possibility influence the descent of a power which claimed to be supernatural and under the immediate care of God. No one can study the development of the Italian ecclesiastical power without discovering how completely it depended upon human power and human dealings, too often on human passions and intrigue, how completely wanting it was of any mark of the divine construction and care, how it was the offspring of man, not of God, and therefore bearing upon it the lineaments, that means the signs, of human passions, human virtues, and human sins. Now what Draper is basically saying there is that it wasn't the church of God. It was a church that was made up strictly of human beings who were doing things that were morally corrupt and that they had descended below virtually every other human being down to the crimes and the sins that were so low that they couldn't be made any worse. Many, many other historians, men who are absolutely honest and more than fair, document the gross perversions of the church leaders at all levels and in all countries over a period of more than a thousand years. The church, with its popes and cardinals, abbots, friars, monks, exorcists, acolytes, etc., was not the church that had been established by Jesus Christ and his apostles. The Catholic argument that there had been an uninterrupted succession of priesthood authority from the Apostle Peter to the present day is absolutely impossible, totally fraudulent, and completely unreasonable, because authority to speak and act in the name of God, with the power to provide the saving ordinances of the gospel of Christ, and the authority and right to represent God on earth cannot be given to men by worldly princes or by prostitutes, cannot be bought for money, cannot be won by murdering other men, and cannot be sustained from one unrighteous man to another unrighteous man to another unrighteous man to another unrighteous man for a thousand years and more. The history of the leadership of the Catholic Church, its complete acceptance of pagan and corrupt doctrines, and destruction of the saving ordinance and simply show that it is the church of man and not the church of Jesus Christ. The completely corrupt condition of the church of Rome, as is so plain and so well documented for well over a thousand years by so many people, so many sources, by the history of the church itself, proved to all mankind that the church had no right to revelation for guiding and teaching the people it claimed as members of the church. And when that, that was so obvious to so many people, there were many open revolts against the tyranny of the leaders and the false teachings of the Catholic Church. Now, I want to make a point here. All of these people that I'm quoting, and myself, I'm not anti-Catholic. We're just anti-sin. We're anti-lies, anti-fraud, anti-all of that stuff. And when you show that somebody is morally corrupt, somebody's a murderer, somebody has done wicked things, and it's documented by so many sources, then it isn't that you're hostile to them. It's simply that you have to support the truth, because that's what God represents. 